On October the 12th, Prime Minister Nawaz Sharif was overthrown by a military coup in Pakistan and has not been seen in public since. The armed forces have promised to crack down on corruption and corrupt politicians. Mr Sharif had faced a succession of accusations. What was his like for his son watching events from London? And what does he think the immediate future holds for his father? Hassan Sharif, a very warm welcome to the programme. The events of October the 12th, both you and your father, in a sense, must have seen them coming. The military coup can't have been a surprise to you. Well, um, if you ask me, it was an absolute surprise for me. I had no idea. I spoke to my father just two days before this coup happened. And um, he never indicated to me anything. He was absolutely... No worries? Nothing out of the nothing ordinary? Nothing at all. It was a completely shocking news for me. But given how upset the military was over the whole incident, the whole Cargill incident, uh, the fact that well, you know, he went to Washington and basically had to bow down before President Clinton and uh, promised to use his offices to get the infiltrators out of Indian administered Kashmir. And this made the army very mad, didn't it? Very angry. And also he fired a top general, the one who's now taken over. Well, I think, um, as you just mentioned about the 4th of July visit, that was, I think, a very courageous step of my father to make sure that Pakistan, Pakistani people are safe, they have a safe future. He, he would have, you know, have a great idea of what would be the consequences back in Pakistan. He was putting his career at line just to make sure that Pakistan becomes a better country. But that's my point. He was putting his career on the line for whatever reason, but he was infuriating the military or doing things that would be calculated to infuriate the military? Well, I don't, I don't understand what uh, made General Pervez Musharraf to do what he has you know, done. I mean, uh, he was absolutely free to speak to the media at that time. He, was, uh, he had an access to national and international media. Why was he so quiet? And why was he just you know, endorsing the, the stand of the government at that time? Have you heard from your father since the coup? No, not at all. I'm, I'm Do you know where he is? I have no idea about his whereabouts. I'm, I'm extremely worried about his safety. And The and Foreign Office says he's just outside Islamabad. The village is just outside Islamabad. They no, haven't told you that? And you nobody haven't asked told them? me that. I don't think that the army people have uh, much courtesy you know, to um, inform me about the well-being of my father and my family. No, but you haven't inquired through diplomatic channels? I mean, if we can phone up the Foreign Office, surely you can as well. Well, uh, I'm a very low-profile person. I've, I've got no contacts with the embassy or the foreign office people. I, I have done nothing. They have done everything back in Pakistan. They but you have been me. lobbying on your father's behalf, haven't you? I am not been lobbying on my father's behalf. What I'm doing is just telling people around the world what actually happened in Pakistan. But you sent a letter to Tony Blair. Yes, I did. And you even that sent one to the Indian Prime Minister, didn't no, you? No, I didn't. That is absolutely misleading. I've been saying it for the last two weeks. And I did not appeal to Mr. Vajpayee, the Indian Prime Minister, to interfere for the safety of my father. That was the last thing I would do. That was totally made up by the newspapers. Just, to, just to damage the reputation of my family. Your father, it's widely acknowledged here, was, was not a popular man in Pakistan, was he? There haven't been many tears shed at his passing. He Does was, that upset He you? was elected by the people of Pakistan with a mandate which never existed in the history of Pakistan. No, but I'm talking about the response to his departure. I, I, I know what you're talking about. So basically, this is a democratically elected government. Ups and downs do come. This does not justify the action of Pervez Musharraf. There was dancing in the streets in Lahore apparently. And which also followed by At his uh, departure. a demonstration which was severely crushed by the military regime. The Frontier Post said the Nawaz government has met the fate it deserved. Former President Lagari said people were so fed up they thought a weight had been taken off them. Not a single tear has been shed for Sharif, he said. Well, that I think is a very personal view uh, from um, politicians who are severely rejected in, in, in the elections. And I don't care about them. But it's not just the politicians, it's the people. I mean, the people have been celebrating, haven't they? I mean, you can't, you can't I mean, make my that father's, up. My father's party is not the only one in Pakistan. There are a lot of other parties, there are a lot of other voters. It's a demo, it was a democratic country. People have right to vote, people have right to, to speak up. It does not mean that if uh, 
government is power, so everybody should support it. It was a country ruined by corruption, wasn't it? I mean, it's been named by the UN Development Program as one of the top five corrupt countries in the world. Well, I mean, this is a, this is a source of, of great shame to any government, isn't it? Well, it is not just uh, the government of my father. This has been happening for the last whole decade. Pakistan is suffering from an absolute um, uh, lack of uh, uh, political um, um, uh, uh, political um, uh, instability, and uh, which the military have threatened to end. The military have said, "Yes, there's been too much political instability. There's been too much corruption. So it's time for us to act." Can't you can't you sympathise with that point of view? I don't think that. I mean, we have a principal stand that what happened was wrong. It was done in a wrong manner. If military was Pervez Musharraf himself was so worried, why would have he not contacted the president? Why would have he not lobbied inside the parliament for the parliamentarians to vote uh, a no-confidence motion against Nawaz Sharif? And why did he wait until he was sacked? Was he planning a coup uh, already? He had, he had an agenda of, of two weeks, three weeks a month? Why did he have to do all this when, once he was sacked? What do you think of all the weight of allegations that have come your father's way? I mean, government documents, signed affidavits, bank files, property records, all alleging an incredible network of corruption managed by him. What do you feel about that? Well, there's two points I want to mention. First, that this uh, all political victimization is not something very new for us. No, but it's not we, just political victimization. There we, are cases to answer here, aren't there? We, we did all this in the years of Benazir Bhutto, whole three years. And we, was, we stood absolutely clear. And this time also, we demand a free and a fair trial from an independent civil court of Pakistan. Not the military. The military have said your father will investigate it. There's a National Accountability Bureau which has been set up which will investigate him. Well, don't Are you not satisfied with that? Don't not forget, satisfied that he'll don't, get a don't forget, fair hearing from that? Don't forget that all those people are selected by Parvez Musharraf, who is himself a self-appointed chief executive of Pakistan. We want uh, uh, accountability from um, elected people, people who have got mandate to do that. He has accused my father of, you know, playing around with institutions. I mean, what could be more hypocritic than appointing himself as chief executive of Pakistan and also shutting down all those institutions, including the Constitution, the Parliament, the Supreme Court? I mean, I mean there is no, no uh, justification of these actions at all. Your father has been accused of money laundering, more than $100 million apparently laundered through a network of UK trusts, Swiss accounts, offshore tax havens. What do you say to that? Well, Those you can lock up a person for the last three weeks and you can blame him for not $100 million to $200 million. Let him come, let him speak to the press, let him speak to, uh, uh, to the international uh, diplomats. And, Do you believe and any him. of these allegations against him? Well, I am not a judge. No, but I mean, you're your father's son. After I'm all. my father's son. That's all right. That, that's, um, that's, I mean, no doubt about that. And uh, uh, as a son or as a Pakistani, I believe he should be uh, given a free chance. He should be given a free trial. In the courts of Pakistan, they have to decide all this. I mean, who, who am I to decide, or, or who is General Prefet Musharraf to decide? So, so you don't know whether he's actually innocent or guilty, do you? I personally believe that my father is a pious man. He has worked hard to make Pakistan a better country. He has worked all his life. He has uh, sacrificed his uh, family life to make Pakistan a better country, a, a good future for the Pakistani people. Can you see circumstances under which he would have been touched by the rampant corruption that now pervades Pakistan? I don't think so. Not at all. I mean, you'll be aware, for instance, that the, the flat that you're living in at the moment, in, in Mayfair, was actually named in the Pakistani paper, The News, last year as one of four which was illegally bought by your father through various Swiss and offshore companies. Well, these are things which, you know, comes up every time there is a crisis in Pakistan. These are not new. Why don't the people who, is, who are actually blaming us for that go to the courts and prove it? But do you know who owns the flat that you're living in? 
But that is not the question right now. Why not? But it's the question I'm asking you. Do you know who owns the flat? Well, it's on a rent. It's, I'm, I'm a ring on a rent basis, which comes from every, every uh, quarter from Pakistan. You're and renting it personally, or the money comes from Pakistan? The money comes from Pakistan. From who? From your father? Not my father. Actually, there, We have a family business back in Pakistan, which is not uh, uh, being built up by my father overnight. It was uh, built up by my grandfather for the last 50 years since the independence of India and Pakistan. Do and, you know who have, owns have, the flat that, that you live in? Well, actually, I'm not the right person to But you live there. You. It doesn't matter. Don't I'm you know who, earning, who it's rented earning. from? I'm, I'm, I'm just like any other student living with his parents. I doesn't necessarily have to know about what the facts and what, who owns the flat and who pays for um, the rent and who pays for my living. But would it interest you to know that the flat is apparently owned by two offshore companies called Nielsen Enterprises Limited and Nesco Limited, both registered in the British Virgin Islands and managed by a company in Switzerland? Would I've that got nothing to say about them. I'm absolutely ignorant. What can I say? Do you have doubts when you hear information like this? I mean, these aren't new allegations. As I said, these were, these were, in, the Pakistani, yeah, these were in the Pakistani press last year. There are absolutely no new allegations. This has been happening for the last two or three years. But these haven't been answered, have they, these allegations? But these have to be done in the court. We don't want a media trial. We want a fair trial from the court. That's absolutely our principal stand. I've got nothing to say other than that. So now your father will face a court. Do you think he will get a fair trial? I don't think issues? so. At this moment, with, the, with, my, with my father's safety in the hand of General Pervez Mishra, I'm absolutely doubtful. There were also allegations in the press that, that you had foreign accounts at Citibank containing funds which had not been declared to the Pakistani tax authorities. I have accounts in Citibank. That's absolutely distortion of fact. That's absolutely misleading. Call anybody from Citibank right now and ask him to confirm this. In any branch? In any branch, in any country, in any city. So these allegations are totally false? Ab absolutely false. I mean, I can speak on my behalf very clearly, and I say this very loud and very clear, that I do not own any offshore accounts in any country, in any bank. So your financial affairs are fully above board? They've been declared to the Pakistani authorities? I have a student account. And uh, I don't think I have to declare that to Pakistan authority. That is just for to pay my fees, to pay my daily expenses, that's all. I'm not earning anything which I have to declare. A lot have been said about your father's lavish lifestyle. How much of that did you see as you were growing up? How much of that have you seen in recent <coughs> years since he came to power? I told you all this um, being, you know, famous, being rich, it's not matter of overnight thing which happened to my family. My father, my grandfather, my uncles, they have worked hard to achieve this over five decades. They've also borrowed hundreds of millions from Pakistani banks, haven't they? Why would they need How to do How could you that? run a business without involving banks uh, in your company? But billions? I don't have figures with me. I can't say anything. You can say billions, you can say trillions. I, what can I say? Did this lifestyle, to a certain extent, alienate you from the rest of Pakistan? The lifestyle that you grew up with? Well, my childhood was comparatively different. I mean, you can say that totally. We, I mean, I was much more protected because of security reasons. When my family was rich, famous, we were absolutely political. So. Uh, Obviously, you can, you can say this, that we were uh, brought up in a different manner. But that does not mean that we were alienated with the Pakistani society. We were absolutely inside of Pakistan. Society. We are very much Pakistani. But you didn't find that the wealth alienated you from the rest of the country? Why, why should I think like that? Because it never happened. No? I mean, one of, one of the houses that your father was due to move into was open to reporters who talked about acres of floors in every hue of marble, dusky pink, forest green, porcelain blue, ceilings adorned with friezes of roses, hand-painted shades of apricot and mint. You don't think that alienates you from what is one of the poorest countries in the world? I don't think so. I mean, this is 
this is absolutely misleading. I mean, the acres and acres, there is a trust back in that, that uh, vicinity, which includes a hospital, hostel, schools. And there, that is a trust that they are for, for Lakes, poor people. swimming pools, a zoo. That is all for, you know, well. keeping, keeping few uh, peacocks and a, and a pair of deer doesn't mean that we have a zoo, which, is, which has a maintenance cost of 100 million pounds. That Six speciality cool. chefs on standby to cook whatever meals. That is absolutely Silverware, absolutely gold wrong. inlaid tablecloths. No, you never saw any of this. That is so wrong. I mean, you can lock but up they, the whole family and no, you no, can but these name are, but, everything. But these are friends of your family who've talked in newspapers. Which who've friends? Said these, who've said these things. What friends? Quoted in the Scots all, newspaper. All the close places. allies, all the close relatives are still house arrested. Foreign friends. What foreign friends? I mean, I... Give me one name. So, they, so, so none of this is true? None of this is true? This you, you've is never seen this? This is absolutely distorting image. This is false image. Tell me the true image, then. Tell me the lifestyle of the family. The lifestyle Pakistan. of my family is fairly simple, not very different than any other Pakistani. We do have uh, you a see lot that of wealth. When they live in we such poverty have. that it can't be different from any other Pakistani. It's hugely I, different. Look at the wealth. Look at the resources that your family possesses. And you say that it's not different from any other Pakistani. But that, I, I, I mentioned that that is not an overnight kickback or a commission thing. My grandfather earned that with the hard, hard work, sheer hard work. He deserves all this. The family deserves all this. It is not my fault that I was born in a rich family, in a wealthy family. But I have all my loyalty with Pakistan and with the Pakistani people. I wasn't suggesting it was your fault to have been brought in a, up in a, in a rich family. I mean, do you, but, but if, merely you, if you try to put words in my mouth, I mean, you but, can say it, anything. I mean, I am But it's clearly, not, it's clearly not the lifestyle of an average Pakistani, is it? That's my point. I am I'm talking about the thinking, the mentality. My father, even though he was rich, he was born in a rich family. He worked all his life to make Pakistan a better country. And if, if this is the reward which we think we will get from Pervez Musharraf, I'm thoroughly disappointed. But it's a reward that was a long time coming, in a sense, wasn't it? Because the allegations had been mounting one after the other. The weight of evidence had gone on building, hadn't it, over, over the last year, the last 18 months? I mean, well, let him produce, uh, let, let Pervez Musharraf produce all the evidence in the court and we'll see. And you're prepared to be convinced? Of course, if, we, we, if, will, if, if there we, is will, we will absolutely regard whatever the independent court of Pakistan says. You talked about the sacrifices that were made in your childhood. What do you think you missed out on because your father was involved in business first and then politics? What did you miss out on? I was very young. I was in, in, in junior high school when my father went into politics. He became the chief minister of Punjab. And uh, I am very sensitive you know, towards my parents. And I, I become happy with very little things, you know, just like you know, my parents picking me up from the school, attending my... But your father didn't very often, did he? But that, that what he sacrificed for Pakistan. He, he loves me a lot. And that's what we have sacrificed. I mean, see my convocation in City University. Your graduation. My graduation is coming up on 19th of November. He promised me that he is going to be there for me on that occasion. That is one of the biggest days in my life. And he directed his foreign office that, you know, they should make sure there is no um, clash of the program. And he wanted to attend my convocation. He was coming along with my family. I was looking forward for my family get-together, which is a very rare occasion. And now I'm, uh, you know, standing in the middle of nowhere. You went to Aitchison College, which is, I suppose, the Eton equivalent in, in Pakistan. College for the sons of the rich and influential in Pakistan? I was one of the many thousands of students who were actually in there at that time. What did that school do for you? I love my, um, love my school, HSN College. I absolutely love you know, uh, getting educated over there. Why? Because that was my school. My brother went there, I went there. I've got a lot of So friends. it represented tradition many, for you, family exactly. tradition? And I've got many good teachers, which I will never forget them. 
But at the same time, it confirmed the distance between you and your father, the fact that your father wasn't there for you on memorable occasions, that there weren't many parties, there weren't many get-togethers. I understand you only got together on his birthday That's a lot right. of the time, 25th of December. That's right. I mean, that is basically family reunion day for us. We've got birthday of the founder of Pakistan. It is a national holiday. My father's birthday, anniversaries, wedding anniversaries of my brother and my sister. So that is one day which, every, which all of us you know, really look forward to all the time. So how do you think your father will withstand captivity? What will be going through his mind now? Will he want to fight or will he resign himself to what's going on? I believe he was forced to resign, which he never did, because that, was, that would have been the easiest escape for the coup plotters to make themselves legitimate. He never did that. He will never run away. Absolutely, I, I can totally confirm that. And your life, do you feel that's changed now, forever? Absolutely. What, what, I've is, never what, is, what is going to happen to you? The rent will presumably stop coming from Pakistan. You'll have to move out of this flat, even though there are allegations that your father owns it anyway. If I have to move out of the flat, I will just take it as, as the life goes. I've got many friends, I've got my relatives. They'll take care of me. I'll take care of myself. I'm, I'm an adult, I'm educated, I'm um, graduated from a, a England University. In sociology and media studies? That's right. You're going to get a job as a journalist? I would love to work for BBC if you want to. <laughs> I thought there was some talk of you going to uh, Paris to s work as an intern in a company there. Is this father's I had influence? Options. Sorry? Is this father's influence? <laughs> Not at all, no. No, not at all. Absolutely, this is a very wrong image, a wrong impression I mean, people are putting on. I had various options to work with many companies, and among them there was a company in Paris who offered me a three-month internship. But I never confirmed that. I'm not going over there right now. And the future for Pakistan? It is a desperately, desperately poor country, doesn't it? isn't it? It needs stability and it needs public order. And clearly it didn't have either under your father's government, did it? So presumably at least some things that the military are doing now will be beneficial. At and least see, what in used to happen term. before my father's government, the president had the powers to dissolve the assemblies, the national assemblies. It was taken for the president. The first time, first time in the history of Pakistan, the Prime Minister was powerful enough to complete his term. And that was, I think, a road towards a democracy and towards a stability in terms of politics, in terms of economy. And now, Pervez Musharraf has shown this way of structural change in Pakistani government, and which I feel is very dangerous for Pakistan. And uh, the previous situation was dangerous too, wasn't it? I, I mean, I, it was drowning in thirty-two billion dollars of debt. Your country. $32 billion of debt. Couldn't have gone on like that, could it? Would that be better now? With all um, the international uh, criticism? With Pakistan being thrown out of Commonwealth? Would that help? Pakistan has lost a great forum. And uh, I think he, Reid Musharraf, has no sense of international diplomacy. That is a complete diplomatic failure, which he, I don't think he has a, a little bit of. Uh, sense to stop that. Hassan Sharif, thank you very much for being with us on thank the program. You. Thank you.